Hi everyone, this is Brian Mitsota, Project Lead on Dead State. Today we're going to be showing off a bit of Dead State's combat. What you're seeing is still very much a work in progress. We're pretty much adding new elements to the build all the time, but since we've got some of the basics in, we thought we'd give you a peek at how Dead State's combat is coming along. So, here we are in the town of Lano, which is one of the first area maps in the game. It's about a medium-sized map, complete with building interiors, so there should be a fair amount of stuff to search through here. Our main reason for being here is to get some uh, parts for a shelter, uh, so let's see what we can find. Alright, let's get started. Um, you'll notice I've brought Vic, uh, one of my allies, with me. And we got some party dialogue here. Something key to consider is that you only see what you and your allies have a line of sight on, meaning you should never run blindly into anything, because uh, you never know what's waiting for you. Case in point, uh, looks like we have a lone zombie hanging out in front of the hardware store. So the zombie hasn't noticed me yet, it's got its back to me. I could just try to run in and uh, get into the store that way, but uh, you never know if there's going to be looters or zombies in there, so let's go see if we can find a back entrance. Or maybe not. Um, let's try taking out that zombie that's in front of the store without making too much noise. So I'll ready my crowbar and slide behind the store zombie. Now, if I had a certain weapon like a screwdriver, I could kill the zombie immediately. I'd lose the weapon, but I'd get a nice one-hit kill, and thus cut down on the danger of combat. Sadly, I don't, so this crowbar will have to be enough. You'll notice that we've entered turn-based combat mode. That'll last until we're no longer threatened by enemies. If you look at the noise meter there in the upper left, you'll see that our attacks have made some sound. Not a lot, but there's a noise cost to every weapon that you should keep in mind. For this build, zombies are only doing their basic attack right now, but they have a few other moves that can be more dangerous, like grapples and bites. One-on-one, uh, -on -one, they're pretty weak, but groups of them can take you out pretty quickly. Good job, Vic! Now, I don't want to go into that hardware store without the proper equipment ready, so I'll pop open my inventory and fix that. As you can see, my character has several different slots. Two for weapons, two for items, and special slots for accessories and armor. I don't have any armor accessories yet, but what I do have is a shotgun, and I'm going to equip that as my second weapon. Uh, I'm going to drop some ammo in the first item slot. Think of those as pockets. Let's head in. Something to remember about Dead State is that combat is dangerous, and killing things doesn't earn you skill points. Gathering items for your shelter and completing objectives is where you get those. But combat can be unavoidable now and then, so it makes sense to be prepared. That back room looks like a good place to find parts. Let's check it out. Uh, parts are used to build a lot of stuff back at the shelter, everything from upgrades to the perimeter fence to new armors. And it looks like there's another corpse in here. I don't want to make too much noise, so I'm switching to melee. Uh, I'm going to try and get by here and into the shop. So this zombie has seen me and started combat. I have higher initiative, so I go first. Uh, the door to the shop seems to be locked. Uh, I don't have a lockpick, so I'm going to let Vic take care of the zombie while I bash the door in. Bashing makes noise, which is why if you have high enough mechanical skill, uh, picking the lock is a better option. One thing to note, uh, map locations play out differently based on your equipment, tactics, allies you take, and presence of zombies or looters. Uh, nothing's pre-scripted, the world reacts to how you play. That did the trick. So, let's loot this place. We've got a lot of good equipment left on this shelf, including a lockpick and a lot of those parts I hope would be in here. Uh, I've also picked up a sledgehammer, which is a much more powerful melee weapon, so let's equip that. Vic's using a machete, which is why he's not doing too much damage to that zombie. Uh, plated weapons are better on humans because they can cause bleeding, uh, not really an issue for zombies. Uh, this sledgehammer is a lot better choice, but it costs more AP to use. Uh, there's positives and negatives to every weapon, so you want to experiment. In theory, the sledgehammer is a great weapon, uh, provided I hit it. Finally got her. Uh, we didn't make much noise, so we didn't track anything else. Before I leave the store, I'm going to check the back room. There's a few things I'm looking for besides parts, food being a priority. Okay, we did attract something, uh, but she didn't initiate combat, so let's not worry about her for right now. Still not much of a threat here, so we'll stick to melee and loot those shelves. 
I'm also looking for luxury items to help offset my morale penalties at the shelter. Uh, containers are randomized, so let's hope we get some. As the game goes on, containers are more likely to be looted. Again, I think I'm going to let uh, Vic handle this one while I loot stuff. Here we've got some soda and some toilet paper. Both of these are luxury items which help with life back in the shelter. Um, there's a morale drain every day from basically living in the apocalypse and all, and these luxury items will help people feel better about your odds. So I'm still thinking about that diner I saw back there, the one with the three zombies in front of it. Um, they may have wandered off by now, uh, and I could definitely still use some food for the shelter, so I think I'm going to sneak around the back of that restaurant and see if I can get in. If you're wondering about the big blue zones around the map, those are the exits to the level. Uh, when you're ready to go, head to those spots and you'll be back on your area map. Looks like the back entrance is locked, so I'm going to use my lockpick. Um, it's a pretty low security door, well within my skill level. Time to check these shelves for food. Uh, it looks like this place still has some supplies. Um, we've got a can of tuna, peanut butter. This will really help with our stocks back at the shelter. All your allies need to eat every day. Food is always a good find. Um, let's check the main dining area and see if we can find anything else. Looks like I'm not alone here. That's a human enemy, a looter. Fighting humans is a fair bit different from fighting zombies for several reasons. The first is weapons, some of which can cause a lot more damage than zombie attacks. Humans are more likely to cause status effects with their attacks. Humans also might have friends around that will react to combat, and they're likely to make noise without necessarily worrying about drawing zombies. If you kill a human, there's a chance they could be infected, so you should always be careful that a human body doesn't become a threat again. Just so you know, if the looter looks like they're not doing anything, they're actually reloading. We don't have a reload animation right now. My shotgun's out of ammo, so I'm going to close the distance for my next attack. So, that takes care of the looter, and ironically I'm going to loot him. Uh, that's a pretty good haul for the day. I've got food, I've got parts, I've got luxury items, and nobody got killed or infected, so it seems like the folks back at the shelter will be pretty pleased in my work. But we did trigger one of the zombies from outside, so let's take him out. So that was a pretty successful run, but before we go, I'm going to try and run up the noise in the hardware store and see what would have happened if we had used guns instead of melee. Watch the noise meter to see what I mean. Guns are powerful, but ammo is scarce, so a horde of zombies is going to chew through your ammunition. Noise not only summons enemies from the area, but if it goes high enough, zombies will enter the map. Uh, in a store like this, getting mobbed would make it difficult to get out safely. Uh, allies that fear zombies would be more likely to panic. That's a good place to stop for the demo. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this first look at combat in Dead State. If you've got comments or questions, come talk with us over in our forums and leave feedback in the official combat demo topic. Thanks for watching.